after an incident at a local elementary school. The mother's post about this online has since gone viral. Meanwhile, the school district is saying the students were, quote, horse playing. Our Alexis Wainwright spoke with those parents exclusively and shares their story tonight. Alexis? Well, Simone, I spoke with the parents who say they're angry, hurt, and confused, but they're also thankful that their son is still here. And tonight they're calling for transparency and answers from the Charles County Public School District. If you look at my son, he has marks under his eyes. He's like due. blood vessels. He still has from bruises him. on his neck from being choked. It's hard to hide emotion as these two parents who don't want to be identified talk about their son. They're hoping for answers after they say their son was hung by a fourth grade student in the boys' bathroom Friday. He's traumatized. Right. It's going to take time. This yeah. is not something that he's going to get over just overnight. Paperwork from the hospital lists one of his injuries as a neck contusion, which is caused by blunt trauma to the neck. The seven year old is a second grader at C. Paul Barnhart Elementary School in Waldorf. Charles County Public Schools says they're aware of the incident and sent a statement saying in part, two of our students were reportedly horse playing in a school bathroom when one student's jacket got caught on a stall door hook. The student was not able to free themselves and the other student involved was also not able to help them. It doesn't make sense to me. If you're horse playing, how do you get caught on a hook? Like I'm. We need answers. I want answers and we won't stop until we get answers. And now the parents say they're sharing their side of the story in hopes of preventing this from happening to anyone else. My son did tell me that when they were in the bathroom, he said that the little boy told him, I'm going to show you how I did people back in the day. That's why I feel like it's bullying because it's no telling how many other kids this has happened to. And they want the school district to step up. I want to see a policy in place. I would like to see at least hallway monitors. I want to know why is a fourth grader in the same hallway or the same bathroom as a second grader? Most schools have them divided. I feel like this is very unacceptable. These are all our children and they are the future. So we just like, we need to protect them. Like we sending our kids to schools every day thinking that they are safe. And the seven year old has since been released from the hospital and is still recovering. His parents tell me they won't be returning back to school, but they hope to hear more updates from the district soon. Simone. All right, Alexis, seven years old. Hard to wrap your mind around this tonight. Thank you. <laughs> all right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory <laughs> to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Bahashim, Rukakudash. I want to give the honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well in grace and peace to you elect around the four winds, believing and pushing his truth in all sincerity. May the blessing of election be upon your houses. This is your fellow servant, Recall your friend of GMS Orlando Camp, coming at you with another impromptu lesson. All right, tonight's lesson, you know, really is, you know, we're living in the worst case scenario. You know, like the elder Yashawama brings out all the time. You know, this is the worst case scenario. This society, this this way of life, this culture, the people, the mindset, everything here in America, which is Babylon the Great according to the scriptures, is the worst case scenario. You know, and here it is, you have seven year olds getting hung. <laughs> getting hung in the bathroom, you know, by other young kids can't be older than twelve years old. And this type of society was engineered by none other than Esau, even the so-called white men. You know, and you may call it extreme, you know, that brothers revert back to the so-called white men. But when you really look at the, 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 the core problem in the, in the planet Earth itself, it is Esau, even the so-called white man. All right, the very society that we live in, the very uh, uh, society, the moral fabric of the society, the, the, the ideas in the society, the, the, the crepid ideas, the debauchery, the you know, the wickedness, the profanity, the, the just out, outright sick society that we live in is a product of Esau Edom's piss poor management. And here it is, you have children, you know, who are stringing other children up by the neck. <laughs> fucking ridiculous but as we all know according to prophecy man these things are supposed to be so all right this is matthew chapter 24 
and verse 12, because things are going to get even worse than this. All right, the Lord spoke about monsters being born in the latter days, All right, which we'll get to. Lord willing, but this is Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. It says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. All right, when you get that word cold, and the uh, blue letter is Strong's G5594, and it's psycho, <laughs> all right? And people in the society are psychotic. And it's tr that's that, that psychotic nature is trickling down even to the children, man. You know, you have monsters in today's day and age, which, um, let me see if I can get that. Get this word first. <laughs> Psychopath. A morally irresponsible person, considered as mentally deranged, one who obeys his impulses, regardless of so social codes. And that's exactly what we see, man. Is this not what we see? A society full of psychopaths, man. People who completely disregard social codes. Who are completely mentally deranged. Everybody is living in their own delusion, their own idea of what life is supposed to be instead of following the standard of Yahweh by Shem Shai. Everybody has their own idea of life. Everybody is their own main character. And they forbid, excuse me, the true main character, which is Yahweh Shai, man. Everybody is morally irresponsible, <laughs> completely moved and, and obedient to the impulses of the flesh, man. This is the society that we live in, man. And this is it's showing more and more. You know, it's, it's showing, it's showing more and more as the days go by, man, how psychotic these people truly are. And that's why us of the hopefully elect need a hedge, man. Because shit like this is going to continue to happen, man. This isn't this isn't a, a isolated event. This is going to continue to happen until the Lord returns, man. You know, let's get this in Second Edges chapter five. And um, so I don't know what's going on. Um. I think it's in verse 8. It's the second of this 5 and 8. It says 7. And the Sodomite sea should cast out fish and make a noise in the night, which it might, which many have not known, but they shall all hear the voice thereof. There shall be a confusion also in many places, and a fire shall oft be sent out again. And the wild beasts shall change their places, which... These are also things that we're seeing as well. All right, we're seeing a, a, a great confusion in many places. You know, the the lines have been blurred between man and woman. The lines have been blurred between, you know, relationships. The line has been blurred between moral morality. You know, who the Lord is, you know, the true doctrine. You know, a lot of lines have been blurred in this society. You know, great confusion. Is it is here, and that's why the scriptures call this place Babylon, the Great, right? Because this this place is a place full of great confusion. People don't even know whether or not, you know, uh, you can't even ask a woman to define what a woman is in today's uh, society, man. In today's day and age, that is undefinable. What a woman is. It says. There shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall oft be sent out again, and wild beasts shall change their places, and mistress women shall bring forth monsters. All right, and then hey, we're seeing them, and these monsters run today's society. You know, if you are, you know, you pay attention to social media, or, you know, you've seen any social media posts, you know, that it's a, a, a trending topic now. Dealing with young niggas. And that's exactly what they call them, young niggas. They have no regard for anything. 
they don't have any regard or respect for their elders, any regard or respect for society, you know, for any moral code. They just fulfill the lust of their flesh, you know, ready to crash out on the smallest instance. You know, and this is a society that was breeded by Esau Edom and these so-called black women, man. Or the or these black women, because they aren't Eves, man. They're black women. You know, society engineered by the so-called white man. You know, it's where you have children who run the society. Children who are completely void of judgment and guidance to where you get shit like this. <laughs> you get seven-year-olds strung up. My, you couldn't be you couldn't be older than twelve. Fourth grade, you can't be older than twelve, thirteen. You know, talking about I'm gonna show you how they did them in the back in the, in the old days. You know, this is how you get this, and this is a product, really, of our disobedience and piss poor management of the earth. Because as the ruler is, so are the people. This is Sirach or Ecclesiastes ten and verse one. A wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. And because the ruler of the city is such a profane and uncouth person, that's the way the court that's the course that society is taken. You know, everybody here is unkempt, uncouth. <laughs> everybody here is, is profane. You know, even down to the children. You know, you saw a set up a system to where children are void of guidance because their parents are working all day. He keeps the parents occupied, you know, in the affairs of this life. You know, he keeps their leisure time at an all time low, keeps you working. Your mind has no no time to think about the Lord, you know, to think about the kingdom, to think about doing the work. You know, your mind is constantly occupied on how you're going to eat, you know, where your next check is coming from and. How you going to maintain your life and your children's lives? You know, so there's no time really to go home and teach the children. There's no time really to go home and debunk all the garbage that they've learned in these uh, lesser learning institutions. <laughs> there's no time to debunk any of that shit. So the children are left to society and... uh these different programs that Esau has out here to teach them. And it completely destroys their minds. It completely destroys their minds. They're on the iPad all day, watching TV all day, on the game all day. They don't learn any any facet or form of righteousness. So they grow up like that. And then you have the society full of degenerates. Void of judgment, void of guidance. And they teach the other generation, the generation under them, and it continues and continues, you know, until you get all out chaos, man. You know, this is the worst, this is the worst case scenario. This is the worst case scenario. And it's a lot more, you know, I want to get into, man, but <laughs> I'll be, I'll be sitting here talking all day, man, you know, because I, I really... I really uh, see the value in a strong family. You know, I really see the value that the Lord imparted in our nation when it comes to having a strong family, having a strong head of the family, you know, having a strong sense of community, you know, having a strong sense of purpose, you know, and, and determination. And these are all things that not only do our community lack, you know, but the whole world lacks, man, because the world is is being ran by piss poor rulers. You know, which a part of the gospel is that the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is coming back to establish proper rulership. He's going to manage the earth how it's supposed to be managed. All right. And the Israelites are going to come under his stead and manage the earth properly under Yahweh Shai's rulership. And this is what the whole world needs. You know, our nation, first and foremost. And the world itself needs righteous rulers because the world was meant to be inhabited. The world was meant to be enjoyed, you know, and right now you can't do that because everything is being fucking destroyed to say to say the least. 
you know. This is Micah 2 and 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted and shall destroy you even with the sore destruction. You know, and this is why the Lord told us, man, arise and depart spiritually and mentally. All right, the Lord will handle the physical departure when he returns. Lord willing, well, the elect. But right now, it's our duty, you know, as the hopefully elect, you know, those who have the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and the mind to comprehend this word. All right, in the gift of faith to believe this word, it's our duty, all right, to arise and depart out of this place mentally and spiritually, man. All right, mentally and spiritually, attach yourself, cleave to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right, because if you continue to stay fixated on this place, all right, you will be polluted. You will be polluted. It's only a matter of time. You know, so we got, excuse me, only got one more precept. You know, I want to get this in Deuteronomy 28. And um, let me see. Because we read this last night in camp. And uh, when I seen this video, when I seen this video, you know, it, it it um it jogged my memory, you know, what was being brought out last night. Uh Damn, hold on. Um give me a second. Uh Lord went on to pop into my mind. Um Okay, I think I got Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 66. Yeah, it's Deuteronomy 28 and verse 65. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, and neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have no assurance of life. You know, and this translates to, to every, you know, member of our nation from man, woman, child, you know, old, young, you know, we have no assurance of life here because there's no understanding of life in this place. People don't value life how they're supposed to because life isn't promoted. You know, death is constantly promoted in this in in this in this society, so that's what people naturally seek after in their actions, in their mindset, in their deeds, in their doctrines. People naturally seek death in this society. And it's a curse. And the Lord is coming to set the standard so that life will be incentivized. Life will be the new standard. Seeking after life and righteousness will be the end thing. But hey, you know, with that being said, that's all I had. You know, just a quick impromptu, man. Lord, when this is edified final you, elect, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Bahashim, Rukakudash, and double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well, and grace and peace to you, elect, around the four winds, believing and pushing this truth, and all sincerity. May your blessing of election be upon your houses. Shalom. Stay up. <laughs>